Well, this is a Briggs and Stratton, but there does not seem to be a serial number tag anywhere obvious. So I don't know what year it is, uh, judging by the look. My guess is probably late 40s to early 50s. You can see it's been neglected for a very long time. So the good news is the motor is free. It does have compression and it's pretty complete. It's got the carburetor. It's even got what's left of the exhaust. Uh, the gas tank, gas tank mount, air cleaner. I think the uh, data tag is supposed to be right here on a plate. Um, I'm not positive about that. Maybe I'll find it when I get in a little bit deeper. First, I want to see if it has spark. So I'm going to spin the motor with the drill and we'll watch right here, see what happens. No spark. Bummer. Seems to have plenty of compression. Of course, when you're checking for spark, you want to make sure the spark plug itself is good. So I'm going to throw it in my antique tester here. Yeah. So the plug's still good. As long as I got the plug out, I think I'll put the scope down in the cylinder and see what it looks like. So we've got no spark go through the usual suspects, right? So it could be a bad coil, could be bad points, could be uh, a condenser issue, it could be uh, a grounded wire somewhere. I think the points are in here, so because that's the easiest thing to check, we'll do that first. The first quick observation is good. Everything looks relatively clean. I don't see any rust or corrosion. So I guess first I'll spin the motor and see if the points are actually opening and closing. And we'll go from there. Okay, they appear to be opening and closing. I do see some corrosion on the contacts, so let me try to just clean that up and see if that does anything. Yep, got the drill back on the motor. Let's see if we got lucky here. Baby. All right, good spark. Well, that saves a lot of trouble, doesn't it? That means we don't yet have to take the flywheel off and mess with the coil. Did you notice the color of that spark? It was a nice bright white blue versus if it was like a more of an orange color. So I got it strapped down to the cart, so hopefully it won't dance all over the place if it starts running. And I'm also gonna take off the air cleaner and the intake neck here so I can introduce some starting fluid. I know this is loose from when I was carrying it. This is a typical oil bath air cleaner of the engines of the day. And it looks like this neck is bolted to the block and to the top of the 
intake manifold. That's interesting. Now well, maybe I'll just leave it on for now. I can see in there. Now the choke butterfly is super stiff, but at least it works. I don't see any evidence of rodents or insects. All right, so here's the throttle butterfly. And looks like that is operated down here by an internal governor. The spring response actually feels good. Well, I'll try to start it with the throttle in the closed position like it is. And then if that doesn't work, maybe I'll get some pliers and hold it like halfway open or something. Here's some more evidence. This motor's been sitting quite a while. This is the uh, fuel line and it's completely blocked with some sort of insect material. She blew some stuff out of the exhaust pipe. Looks like an old wasp nest. Some type of a nut. Some leaves. And a bunch of old dirt and rust. Okay, it'll run. Now I need a fuel source. Let's have a look at the inside of this carburetor. Throttle butterfly is a little loose side to side. She's stuck on there a little bit. So the bowl is right around here, and then the center is the air intake. Comes from, from there. Needle's actually going up and down. I would have bet money against that. Flow adjustment looks good too. It's a little sticky. That's better. So in my opinion, somebody's clearly been in here at some point because the float looks good, the needle looks good. The needle is working. A little, like I say, a little play in this butterfly, but uh, we'll just leave that as it is for the moment. And the bowl doesn't look that bad. 
I was going to put this in the ultrasonic cleaner, but uh, I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to hit it with some brake clean. Uh, make sure that pickup tube is clear. Looks like it's got one mixture screw right there. So let me get this pickup tube out. Make sure it's clear. And I think I'll just do some cleaning and put it back together. This must be the main mix needle. And the one on top must be the idle adjust. That's what I'm going with anyway for now. Because yeah, this is meant to be adjustable with this flat head on the end. It's a little stiff. All right, that's a little better. Just hit it with some lubrication. So this pickup tube is clear and I can see just by looking with my eyes. See that? It goes all the way through. Okay. So we'll snug this guy back up. So you have to be able to turn this. I guess I'll go with the old standby of running it all the way down We'll back it out one, two, three half revolutions or one and a half full revolutions. And we'll start there. This choke butterfly is very stiff. Yeah, it's just, it's just been sitting so long. It just binds up with dust and whatever. I'm not seeing any rust or corrosion in this carb, so uh, I think that's a good sign. When the air intake pipe is on, you can't see in here, so I just have to remember that the choke is on when this lever is sort of down like this. When it's up, that's a uh, choke off. And of course, I'll never remember that, so let me just make a mark for myself. So I just got a temporary fuel inlet pipe installed so I can hook up a rubber hose to a pony tank. It's a good sign the carburetor is not leaking. I can only assume that the float is working. Let's see if this thing will run. Wow, she's a runner. 
I am impressed. Let me see if I can plumb in the uh, stock gas tank. I'd be safer. The inside of the gas tank is surprisingly clean. The sediment bowl is another story though. She's all jammed up with crud. All right, I'm gonna go put these in the ultrasonic cleaner and then I don't see why I can't just use that tank. As long as this tank doesn't leak, it should be good to go. And I'll just have to make a different fuel line for it. All right, here's the screen. And the bowl. This is the valve itself. And here's the top. And the bale. This is the old crusty gasket. And I guess I'll probably just throw that back on Hope for the best. And here's the outlet fitting, completely jammed up with whatever this is. We'll let the cleaner do the rest, huh? I've already got it preheated, ready to go. Like 15 minutes ought to do it. All right, it's out of the cleaner. I'd say she did a great job. Screen goes there. Let me put the fittings on first. And the valve. Okay, so we'll put this crappy gasket back on for now. Hope that it seals. And the bale. And this little thingy was in between there. Tighten that up snug. Forgot you can't have this fitting on there when you're trying to screw it on. Before we go any further, I want to make sure this thing isn't going to leak. And it very well might. So far, so good. Okay, let me make up a new hose for it and we'll fire it up. I'm just going to use rubber hose temporarily. truth hopefully this valve will work that's that bad gasket well the gasket just disintegrated that time when I took it off well I don't have a flat washer but I did find an o-ring that's the exact size as the bowl here so I'm gonna give this a try. And if this doesn't work, I'm stuck until I get a better gasket and or bale, because I think this bale is stripped out on the bottom. Mm. Sometimes when you get these things sealed up and then turn the gas on, it doesn't flow until you, uh, Break the seal again temporarily and retighten it. So let's hope that's what's going on. Yep. So the bowl is not leaking, but now I'm going to see just to make sure I've got fuel coming from the uh, tank all the way to the carburetor.
Okay. So I've got the original gas tank back on, plumbed, about a third full of gas. I put the air cleaner back on. Um, it's clean enough in there to run it the way it is. 